Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Hospitable Host Podcast. I'm Emily, Senior Product Manager here at Hospitable, an Inc. 5000 company that gifts hosts their valuable time back. I am joined today by Mike Riley, co-founder and CEO of Your BNB Property, a technology investment and hospitality organization that homeowners ma- to help homeowners maximize their rental returns. Mike is also because that's not enough, the COO of STR Secrets, where he's helped over 400 clients scale their own STR businesses. Welcome, Mike. Hey, yeah, glad to be here. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, so I would would love to hear a little bit more about you and kind of the long journey that brought you here into the hospitality industry. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So first of all, I love Hospitable. Um, I got into, into real estate in 20, late 2019 is when I first, like, read rich dad poor dad and um i was in my see i was living in nashville tennessee at the time so tons of airbnbs there tons of short-term rentals there and um i was actually going down more of the uh multifamily route just like i wanted to figure out how i can start investing in other things outside of like the 401k i worked at google at the time so i was a uh, uh, working on their cloud unit there and um I, I wanted to figure out a way how to stop trading my time for money and that's when i found short-term rentals. I met a mentor and he just kind of gave me a a brief background on what STRs can do. And I pretty much went all in, um, in late 2019, bought my first property in 2020, um, in North Carolina where I'm from. And then from there in about 18 months scaled to 19 properties, left my job at Google to, to now do this full time all while, uh, getting married and having two kids. And, um, and so that's what most of my time is spent on now is, is with my family, which is amazing. We get to travel a lot of really cool places. Um, and we have 26 properties that we own slash manage now um, through your BNB property. And I spend a lot of my time now on coaching and teaching other people how to do the same thing as well. So I partnered with my mentor I mentioned earlier to um, start a bigger coaching community. And, um, and that's, that's my passion. Like I, I just love it. And, um, and I love the short term rental, um, community. Everybody helps each other, which is so unique. Um, so that's, um, that's a little bit of background around me. That That's awesome. That's so true about the host community. I'm a host myself and there's a lot of like Facebook groups out there, you know, based on the location. And it's, it's a little bit weird sometimes being in those Facebook groups and being like, wait, you're spilling all your secrets. <laughs> then you're like, actually, this can help everybody. And it is, it is really unique for sure. I love that. Yeah, totally agree. Awesome. So just out of curiosity, you, you kind of had a goal to replace your income, right? So you could spend some more time with your family. H- how long did that take and how much did you kind of have to double down to get to that point? Yeah, yeah, it took me about 18 months. So the first two properties that we bought in 2020, um, one was a vacation home, one was a four unit where my wife was from. And um, that alone gave us about $6,000 of income. Um, on a monthly basis. So we were able to use that to retire Sierra so she could focus full time on this business. So while I was still working at Google, um, right after we got married, she focused on this full time and was able to um, really allow us to grow more more clients and, and start managing more properties for people. Um, so it took us about 18 months to replace that. Uh, I, I, all I needed was about 240 grand a year um, between the both of us. And, um, and so it took us 18 months to get there now about 18 properties. And we also hired one person during that time too, to help run the operations, run hospitable, um, with us. Um, so that was, uh, we, we spent a lot of nights and weekends building out properties for ourselves, building out properties for the owners. That was probably the most time consuming part of it. Um, I love running analysis on properties using air DNA, using price labs, using a lot of the different tools. That's kind of my superpower is making sure that the numbers work. Um, always has been, I've got an econ background. And so, um, I spent a lot of my time looking at properties on Zillow. Um, you know, while a lot of my friends were out going, going to parties, going, going to bars, I was analyzing deals. So <laughs> I love to do I love that. I always joke with my friends, like a a lot of people have social media addictions and I'm like, I I don't need to delete my Instagram account. I need to delete Zillow off my phone (laughs) because that's what sucks (laughs) most of my time away. Just kind of brainlessly scrolling new houses. It's very fun. Um, 
Awesome. So those first couple properties that you acquired, were they all short-term rentals? Did you explore midterm rentals at that time? How do you kind of use both of those strategies yeah. hand in hand? Yeah, great question. So the first property, vacation rental property, like it's always been been that way. It wouldn't do well as a long-term rental, wouldn't do well as a midterm rental either. Um, but the, the four unit that we bought, <clears throat> this was August of 2020, July 2020. Um, we started out, we bought it, it had four tenants in it. So it's just one bed, one bath units. They're about 900 square feet each. Um, and it's, it's basically an old, very historic. It was built in like 1880 and it was an old home, but it got broken up, I think like 40 years ago into four units. And so I ran the numbers as to like, all right, if we kept all three or if we kept four long-term tenants in it, how much would we make? And there we would have cash flowed probably six or 700 bucks. Um, if we changed one of them to a short-term rental and it averaged like 2,500 a month, we would make about a thousand bucks a month um, profit. And then, so we did that. One of the, one of the uh, units was going to be vacant after I think like two months of us owning it. So we switched it to, we furnished it, switched it to a short-term rental. Um, and then I heard about this thing called Furnish Finder. <laughs> And, um, and so listed it on Furnish Finder for a little bit more than what we were expecting on the, on the short-term side and it got rented immediately. And so we ended up now in that complex, three of them are short-term slash midterm. So we kind of maximize, we have 97% occupancy on that property. Well, we maximize, um, if there's any gaps in the midterm bookings, we fill it with short-term bookings. Um, and so when we took over that property, it was doing right around twenty twenty seven thousand dollars of income a year as a long term rental. Last year, it did seventy six thousand dollars in top line revenue. Holy cow! So um, that really kind of catapulted us to to do that again. And so we've done that twice with two other four units. Um, and so we just do a nice mix of midterm stays. We have a great relationship with the hospital here. Um, a couple of different business units there where they have a lot of traveling, um, traveling therapists, occupational therapists, travel nurses, travel doctors. Um, and so they kind of know me as, Hey, he's the guy that's got the great one bed, one baths. Um, I've got gyms in my properties, uh, blackout curtains, that sort of thing to really tailor. I'm pet friendly in every single one of them. Um, so I try and try and make the experience as nice as possible for them because ultimately like, they're helping out our community a lot by coming here and, and taking care of our people. So I need to give them a nice place to stay. Um, and, and that's what I really enjoy about serving that uh, traveler type is because it's, it's helping everybody at the end of the day. So. Yeah, that that's awesome. How, how did you go about forming a relationship with the hospital? Who did you call? Yeah. <laughs> did I, mean, you form? I really just asked one of my, one of my tenants, I said, who's, who's your boss? <laughs> and like, nice. how do you, how do you guys typically look for housing? And, and they said, you know, they get the contracts and then typically they just go on Airbnb, they go on Furnish Finder and they reach out to people. And I said, well, what if I you know, got in touch with your your manager who kind of runs all the travel departments? And uh, and so they got my contact information. They now have my website through Hospitable and they reach out that way. Um, so they just they'll auto book through my direct booking site. And, um, and a lot of times it's just like, hey, got your information from Susie and looking forward to stay. <laughs> so. I feel like you had a really opportunity to be able to test a couple different strategies in a single property, right? You had those four units and not a lot of people are able to kind of like test them all at once and see what's doing really well. Um, that's great. So do you strategically like arrange the gaps between midterm rentals like do you ever like shut midterm down for a season because you know short term can be really busy uh, how do you think about that no um you know i could do that i i just feel the the strategy that i take right now is like basically anything outside of 14 days is a 30 day minimum and then any anything inside of 14 days or 2 weeks i'll do a three night minimum, anything inside a week, I'll do a two night or a one night minimum during the week. Um, that way I can kind of maximize and also prioritize the, you know, 30 day plus bookings. So that's really my strategy. Now, could I make a little bit more in the summer here? Because the summers, I mean, it's, I live in a small town um, called New Bern, North Carolina. It's 
maybe 50,000 people in our county. So there's one hospital. Um, and it's very historic. It was actually the first capital of North Carolina, the colonial capital of North Carolina, which is pretty cool. Uh, so there's a lot of history here. The History Museum is here. And so a lot of, a lot of tourists come here. Um, I could maybe make a little bit more, but not much. And just the, the operations of turning over the property four, five, six, seven times a month. Um, I have 26 that I manage. So like, it's really not worth my time and like has, you know, additional things on my plate to worry about that. So, yeah, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And I know is why one of the reasons so many people are so attracted to the idea of midterm rentals. Like if you get three tenant, three or four tenants in a year, that's three or four turns. I mean, you, anybody can do that. Yeah. Whether you have a job, a family, like you can make that work. So, yeah, um, that's awesome. So, those are the properties you own. What about the properties that you manage for other people? Tell us a little bit about that business and maybe like at what point do property owners kind of realize, ah, I need some help and come to you for that help? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good question. So I didn't really, I didn't even know what, you know, co-hosting or property management was until, um, until I got into this and really I, I set the goal to leave leave my job um, by my daughter's first birthday. That was, that was like my goal by September 15th, 2022, I would leave my job. Um, and I did, I think four months early, but the way I did that, like after I bought my first two properties, I was pretty much out of money. Um, I was like, I was kind of tapped out. Um, and, and so I had a bunch of family and friends and loved ones that asked me, Hey, like, do you, do you want to manage my property? Cause I was putting it on social media and telling a lot of people what we did. So, um, and then got, got referrals from there too. So like my, I started managing a, a beach house for my in-laws, um, uh, that they purchased, managed another four unit for her, um, my mother-in-law's real estate business partner. Um, and then just kind of word of mouth got out. And then I started managing for one of my neighbors in Brevard, North Carolina, which is where we bought our first property. It's like six hours away. So, um, I typically work with people that like, They've got a property, they want to be hands off. They want to, you know, they want their place occupied. They want to check every single month. And, um, and that's kind of where I fit in well, cause I, the way our operations work is, um, a lot of it is automated through technology. And then we got the finance part of it too, the bookkeeping. Um, but I think it's just a really nice way to provide a great experience, have control, um, not only for a great experience for the, for the guests, but also for the client too. Um, so that it can be a win-win for everybody. And so that allowed me ultimately to purchase another property and then leave my job, um, June of last year. Um, and it's, it's just, um, it's a great business cause you don't like, I have no desire to really become a Vacasa or an Evolve. Um, it's not my, it's, it's not my calling. I don't think, um, I'm just here to manage my properties, help people that I, that I like, um, and like to work with. And, you know, you don't have to build a multi, multi-million dollar, have 75, 100, 150 listings. Um, and I think that's where I see property management going in the future is there's going to be less and less big, big companies. And there's going to be more, you know, what we call like mom and pop operators um, like myself and like the people that I teach that provide an awesome experience. And it's also very hands-on too. Yeah. Yeah, that that's great. I Before we bought our property. We, we just have the one that we host ourselves. We intentionally stayed at a couple of rentals that were managed by some of those bigger companies. We were just curious, you know, we were like, should we get a property manager or whatever? And so we stayed at them and we were kind of shocked at how little help we had when we needed it. And we were, you know, whatever, we're kind of doing research. So maybe it's not nice to ask questions when you don't really need it, but basic things like, you only have one trash bag and the answer would be something like you're out of luck. You know what I mean? Um, those mom and pop shops can provide that extra service. That's so, so nice. And guess what? When they're on vacation, you know, we always had a better the standard. Experience. The standard is just being raised across the board. I mean, you can see it. Everybody bought a property in 2020, 2021, <laughs> especially in 2022. And so um, the standard, not only for like Airbnb listings and like, you know, making sure that your marketing is good is being raised. The standard for property management is being raised. People are, you know, tired of managing their properties as well. So, um, 
you know, for those who are building their property management or co-hosting business out there, there's plenty of opportunities. You just got to wait for the right one and then also know what the right one is for you too. So like know what, know what like your owner client type is and then hang out where those people hang out. Like where do they own properties and networking with the right real estate agents, that sort of thing. I think the opportunity right now for building a, a good property management business, I mean, you don't meet, you don't need that many properties in order to have a nice living. So um, that's a, a massive opportunity I see over the next, I mean, now for the next five, 10 years. So you talked about marketing a little bit, and I think that's where a lot of newer hosts get tripped up because we are very privileged to be getting lots and lots of bookings from Airbnb, verbobooking.com, wherever they come from. Um, but if we want to future proof ourselves, there's direct booking opportunities and all that stuff, but then you have to market your own property. So what, how do you handle that with your owners and the properties that you're managing? managing to kind of give like full circle service? What do you do? What are your recommendations? Yeah, I think the, like the baby steps, if you're a Dave Ramsey fan, um, <laughs> which probably not a lot of people listening are, but um, is like, you need to make sure that you have a top 1% Airbnb listing. And one, once you get that and you're like, you're ranked on the first page of Rank Breeze or, or IntelliHost, whatever tools you use for that. I think Hospitable is coming out with a little integration with, uh, with rank very soon, but, um, it's true. <laughs> but that's like kind of the step one is what I typically tell people, like, make sure that your property is, is on the first page. And if you're in a saturated market, like the Smokies or Orlando, if you're in the top five, six pages, you're still going to get booked, but make sure your pictures are amazing. Your amenities are amazing. Look at the other top properties that are in the area. What amenities do they have? And don't skip out on that. Um, make sure you invest in your properties, not only the first time, but every single year. And then from there, take the step into Verbo, get your listing looking very similar in Verbo so that you're on those main two channels. Um, and then from di a direct booking side, um, it really depends on your, your traveler type. And like, if you're in a vacation rental type market, the main thing that you're gonna wanna do is, uh, there's really two things. The first thing is you need to absolutely be marketing to repeat guests. So getting their contact information somehow and, and marketing to them via email and via text and then have that direct booking site ready so that they can they can book, uh, but also just add value to them. It's not always like, hey, book now and you get 10 percent off. It's, hey, here's the top things to do in this market. Here's the top hikes. Here's the top waterfalls. And it's a you're just staying aware and getting their attention through email um, and social as well. So those two things, if you're in a vacation market, are huge. Um, now Facebook ads is what a lot of people are talking about. Like, how do I, how do I get more books? Should I run Facebook ads, that sort of thing. And I'd say absolutely, but use it more of like a lever to pull when you're not getting booked. So if you feel like your, your listing is struggling or you're not getting booked right now, if you can run a Facebook ad for a certain weekend and drive more traffic to your site, Airbnb is going to pop, pop you up in their um, algorithm, same thing with Verbo, um, run ads to your Verbo listing too. And then also run ads to your direct booking site as well. Like a lot of people run ads directly to their direct booking site, but I feel cold traffic going to like a site that they don't really know is tough. So it's like still run and put money to run traffic to your Airbnb site because that's a trusted platform, you know? Um, so that's typically what I tell people who are struggling with, um, figuring out what the marketing strategy should be. It's like, take the baby steps. And then once you're there, need to repeat guests, you know, hit them up. And then also it pulled the lever of Facebook ads to drive more traffic and ultimately get booked. And I think this is, it's only going to evolve. There's so many different companies that are coming out with products um, to help guests or help owners get more booked um, outside of the OTAs. So it's really interesting time. It is. Yes. <laughs> um, so you guys use hospitable, obviously, which is great. Thank you. Um, so kind of with, with your hospitable customer lens on, what would you tell other hospitable hosts? Um, what advice would you give them? How can they optimize their own operations as they're growing on, on hospitable specifically? Yeah. Um, for other hosts, I mean, it really depends on kind of where you're at, but think about where you want to go, like what the, what is the goal? And then, um, you know, Hospitable does a great job of 
of one onboarding properties, but two, just like consistently upgrading their product. Um, I actually, um, I think I told you this, I left hospital probably about a year and a half ago to go to Guesty as I was building out my, my property management business. And they had, you know, mainly the owner portal and they had the, um, the kind of like accounting, like bookkeeping modules as well, which ended up not being very good. Um, uh, but long story short, um, uh, came back after I think 11 months because just the product that hospitable made, it's just like continuing to, to improve and Guesty was doing the opposite. They were just breaking everything and, um, and then just increasing the price on us. But what I would tell people is like, look at where you want to go. And then if you want to build and get to like 20, 30, 40, 50 properties, think about hiring someone that, you know, can come in and run the, the product for you. Um, and like document a lot of the things that are taking up your time. So, so that somebody can come in and like act like you act with the product. Um, and so create like a mini training course or, you know, document that somebody can come in and be able to, um, to pick it up right away and kind of take time off your plate. So you don't have to respond to guests at, you know, late at night or you don't have to like manage cleaners and stuff like that too. So, um, so yeah, that's the main thing. I, I'm sorry. I don't have more. I really don't have any complaints with the product <laughs> as you know. Um, well, you're so, not allowed to have complaints on the podcast anyways. <laughs> yeah. I, I would keep those secret anyways. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, awesome. Okay. So you're serving a lot of owners to, uh, manage their property for them. Mm -hmm. Have you seen any common mistakes they make that's kind of like the trigger to get them to come to you? Like what problems are you solving like right off the bat when you get a new owner that you're managing for? Yeah, it's definitely not getting, you know, they're not getting booked. They're not getting the attention yeah. that, they, that they need and they deserve. Um, you know, the most people, most property management companies especially aren't, aren't adapting to the new standard honestly, and they just have too many properties. So um, that's what typically the, the clients that I work with, they come to me with, hey, I'm not getting booked. Like, can you help me out? And I'll give them some pointers. Um, and then they'll be like, hey, can you just take this over for me um, and manage it for me? Because I'm, I'm always like, I want to give value first. So like if somebody comes to me and they say, hey, can you just give me some tips? I absolutely will. I'll never say, hey, you have to work with me before I give them any of my knowledge. Just like what you mentioned earlier, like the, the whole host community, um, in short term rentals, I think it's very value add um, and has the abundance mindset. So um, it's a uh, it's something that's new as well. Like this, I think. Um, the secrets were were previously being held back a little bit. <laughs> um, and now now that um, there's more hosts, there's more companies that are mom and pop type of companies, um, there's just more more value to be added and just the amount of listings that have been added. I mean, I was looking at AirDNA report over the last two years, it's up like, I don't know, like 12% year over year and the amount of listings that are being added. So, um, so yeah, that, that's the type of people that typically come to me and, and what I'll tell people as well is like add value as much as you can, and then it'll come back to you 10 times in return. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, I know a lot of owners, especially newer ones, and I, I was in this bucket, like, don't want to hire a property management company because they want every penny to themselves. <laughs> so can you share any numbers around how hosts or sorry, not hosts, how owners have actually benefited from going with you? You've obviously gotten more bookings and all that stuff. And it's it must go back to them too, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I was actually just telling this, uh, somebody called me yesterday. She has a seven unit here and then another single family home. And she was giving me some of her numbers um, on on her property. And I was basically telling her, you're not getting enough. Like you're not, your property manager is not charging enough. Um, she had a, a two one that was getting like 1800 a month. And I've got three two ones here that are getting 2400 a month. And so it's like, I asked her, How, what's your current property manager charging? She said 15%. Um, well, actually before we even got into that, she was like, how much do you charge? And I said, I charge 25%. Um, but if you look at it, 25% of 2,400 versus 15% of 1,800, like she's going to be making more working with me. Right. So, um, and then she's like, well, how do you do that? And that's where I get into the marketing and, 
and just operating the properties the right way. The reviews too. Like if you, you know, if you get a property and you get, you're going to 4.5 star reviews, like people aren't going to book that. They're going to, they're going to read the reviews that are in there too. And, and, and see that people have complaints. So um, I think my, my Airbnb profile is probably 4.97. We've got four or 500 reviews. Um, thanks to Hospitable's message, <laughs> um, asking for the review. I think that's huge. If you guys aren't doing that, definitely ask for the review every single time um, after a guest stays. So, um, so yeah, that, that's just a small example of um, just showing a, a client, hey, here's my properties that are doing, um, doing well that can justify a, hard, a higher management fee. So you guys are striving to be the number one boutique short-term rental management organization in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe those words came out. I thought for sure I was going to jumble that. <laughs> um, what What is it going to take for you guys to reach this goal and, and how far away or how close is that for you? Yeah, I think it's just getting the word out more. Um, you know, I'm good with marketing um, my properties, marketing myself, not so much. <laughs> um, so I think it's just getting our brand out there a little bit more. Um, I just hired a marketing guy who's going to help me out a little bit more with that. Um, but just applying the same standards that we have for marketing properties to marketing our company um, and then working with the right owners and property types, too. So um, when I first started, I started picking up properties all over North Carolina. Um, and now I focus. I've got two little kids under the age of two. So I'm focused just here in my market within like 45 minutes of me, which is a lot of beach properties. Um, so I think just just growing our brand there more and getting our, our name out there more. Um, is really our goal so that we can help the right people with the right type of properties. Awesome. I think that's all we have time for today. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Mike. And thanks everyone for listening. We'll see you next time. Thanks for having me.